This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and happy Friday. God bless you. I'm Pastor A.D., Pastor of True Vine, NBC, here in Houston, Texas. And I thank you so much for joining us for like to call the pastoral moment. This is the time I get to encourage you and enlighten you with the word of God. And today, I want to encourage you, before we start this new year, I want to encourage you how to start and living a new life. Starting and living a new life. Yeah. It's time for it. It's time for the change. It's time for change. You don't want to go into the next year the same way you are today. You want better. You want more. Really, for the unsaved, if you're unsaved, you're, you're not saved, you don't know Christ, you don't have a Savior in your life, this is the time. This is the moment. This is the time to come to Christ. And I'm going to tell you and teach you how right now. And I'm going to tell you right now today. This is your time to receive him. This is your time to come into Christ. This is the time to receive eternal life. This is the time to receive your sins forgiven forever. This is the time. This is the time. And so how does someone get a new life? Well, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. So, that's how someone get a new life, okay? Therefore, if you are in Christ, so if you come into Christ, if you come into Christ, believe that in your heart, in your heart, that Christ is your Lord and Savior, you will become a new creation. You will be a new person, a new man. Your, your sins, your slate will be wiped clean and old things have been passed away and behold, behold, a new you, presenting a new you. All things have become new. So you're no longer the old person. You're a new person. You don't do the things you used to do. You don't go to the same places you used to. You don't say the same. You're changed now. It doesn't happen overnight, but you start the process of glorification. Then we have Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. What hope do I have for a new life? What hope do you have for a new life? Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. That's the hope that you have for a new life. Do not remember the former things. Consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. You hear that? Nor consider the things of old, but behold, I will do a new thing. This is again, behold. God said, behold again. A new thing. He will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth and shall not know it. You shall not know it when it spring forth. I will even make a road in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. So this is the thing. In the wilderness, when you get into trouble, when you got all type of mess going on in your life, drama, problems, issues, all this stuff going on, God will make a road in the wilderness, in the desert. He'll And, it, and even he'll put a, a water, he'll put water stream where you can drink. You can drink thirst. You have the life uh, of, um, the living water there and you get the hey god is there no matter what when you're in christ we have benefits we have great benefits being in christ and it's very beneficial for you to be in christ to become the church to be a part of the church is very important because your slate is white cream clean all your sins are washed away and now now it shall spring forth Things will happen. Behold, I will do a new thing. So God wants to do a new thing in your life, but nothing won't happen until you come to Christ. And once you come to Christ, you turn away from that sin and you change your thought process. You change your mind. Then we have what can't earn or make a new life. What can't? It is a gift from God through Jesus Christ. What? We can't. We can't do that. We can't earn. We can't do that. We can't. That's just what. That's the what. We can't do that. We, it is a gift from God. God has chosen us. He has chosen some of us to be in his kingdom. And so it's Titus 3, 4 through 6. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the what? Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, hey, it's not because of you. It's not because of you that you're saved. Those who are believers in Christ, it's not because of you. It's not because of your works. Your works cannot save you. Your works is not good enough. It wasn't good enough. It'd never be good enough to save you. No, Jesus paid it all for us on the cross. He paid it all. That way, now we have eternal life. We have a second chance to life. We have eternal life. We have our, our 
Again, our sins have been wiped clean. Our slate has been wiped clean. It's like we never done anything, never committed any type of crime, never did any type of sin before God. It's like it's just wiped clean because we are the regenerate, the regeneration. We're the repentant. So we should come every single day, all day into repentance because of our sins. And then we have, how does someone get a new life? How does someone get a new life? Do anybody know how? 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 Again, we know that. We know how. I just told you. Because you're a new creation, you become new in Christ because you receive Christ. That's it. That's the key. We got to learn to receive Christ. Those who haven't, you need to learn to receive Christ. And then we, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we leave our old life and take on a new walk, a new Christ-like life, okay? A new walk, a new talk. Everything is different now, okay? We're not just hearers of the word. We are doers of the word. Ephesians 4, 21 through 24. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth in Jesus to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. And so it's about put, put off that old self before you put on the new self. You got to put off that old self. When Christ died, we died. Okay. The old man died. And when he rose, the new man, the new person also rose in us. We came, we left the new man and we left the old man in the dirt and the new man came out the grave. And so we have risen with Christ. We are new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. You And then we have, you can't have a new life and hang onto your old ways. Again, let me say it again. Let me reiterate. You can't have a new life and hang on to your old ways. A lot of us want to do that. We all, oh, that's that old man. I'm hanging on to it. I want to do this. I, I When I used to do this and I want to do it, I still want to do it. Mark 2, that's Mark chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. No one sews a old piece of unshrunk cloth on their old garment or else the new piece pulls away from the old and the, t and the tear is made worse. And no one <clears throat> puts new wine into old wine skins or else the new wine bursts the wine skins. The wine is spilled and the wine skins are ruined, but new wine must be put into new wine skins. And I hope you get that. That's very simple. Bottom line, you can't have the old and the new together. It doesn't work. Light and darkness does not work together. It, it will never work together, light and darkness. What do they have in common? They have nothing in common. Okay, nothing. Nothing at all. So you can't do that. You can't have that in your, that's not, that's not Christ-like. No, that's not how it works because we got to put away those things. Be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to learn to have that renewed mind, the renewed heart, that renewed spirit when you're in Christ. So when you come to Christ, you got to leave that old self behind. And now you're taking on a new image, a new person, a new you, a new attitude, a new... I'm not saying that you're going to be perfect. None of us are perfect. However, we, we work towards perfection every single day. And when you realize the growth within you because you don't do nor say the same things you used to. Hey, you're getting better. You're growing every single day. And that's how you are when you are in Christ. Then our last one, die to self by keeping your mind on heavenly things. And let your life be covered by Christ. That's Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Set your mind on things above, not on things on this earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. See, you, you've died to that. You've died to sin. You've died to all this mess. You died to this drama. You died to all these things that you used to do. The partying, the drinking, the getting high, the getting drunk. All that stuff is gone prostitution, all that is gone, homonging, all that is gone, homosexuality, all that is gone, all that stuff is gone, murdering, kidnapping, whatever you used to do, stealing, robbing, is gone. Now you come to Christ, you've died to that, it's gone, it's no more, 
And now it's hidden in Christ. It's hidden in God because God doesn't see that. What God sees now because of Jesus Christ, not because of your works, because of Jesus Christ. We don't have to have to have any type of good deeds anymore. None of that is good to have them, but we don't, none of that get us to heaven. No, our works get us our crown. But now that Christ have died for our sins, he have given his life for our sins and he rose for our sins with all power in heaven and earth. He didn't stay dead. He didn't stay in the grave. No, he got up on the third day. Unlike other lowercase g gods, he got up with all power in heaven and earth. And so now God sees us, his church, only his church as righteous. He sees us as righteous. Only believers in Christ, he sees as righteous. And so he sees us as perfect, though we know we're not perfect, but he sees us as perfect. That doesn't give us a license to sin neither. No, it doesn't do that. No, it doesn't. We don't have a license to sin. We don't believe in dualism. We don't believe that because we have the benefits of Christ, that he has forgiven us of our sin, that we can do what we want to do and we have a license to sin and everything's okay. No, your mindset is different now that you're in Christ. Now you live to please Christ. You you live to please Christ. Not saying you're not going to sin. We're going to fall short of God's glory, but we don't have a lifestyle of sin. Thank you so much for joining us. And please, this is the way to start a new life. Confess from your heart with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that's your Lord and Savior. Receive him as your Lord and Savior, and you are saved, and you'll receive justification you receive sanctification, and we're all looking forward to glorification. God bless you, and I thank you. Maybe have a blessed rest of your week. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So we're going into a new year. Tune in Sunday for the Word of God. We're going into a new year, new things. Um, speak that over your life. Speak great over your life. Speak uh, wonderful things over your life and over your children, over your grandchildren. Please do that. Speak those things that are not as though they were. Stop speaking the negative. Speak positive things over your life. God bless you. May you have a blessed weekend and keep God first in everything. It's time to start a new life. We hear True Bond. We love you. And you want to know why? Because we are the church of love. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.